Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Poe from the Offenders, DC Universe Online, here on the uh, public test server. I'm here today to talk about Earth. Now, Earth is the newest of power sets. It was just released in March. Um, its alternate support role is for tanking, and uh, I'm going to be talking about tanking and DPS and just a couple abilities. Uh, there's also a unique uh, mechanic to Earth that is uh, kind of cool and I'll get to that in a second. Now the first of the two trees I'm going to talk about is geokinesis. Um, some people refer to it as the pet tree because as you can see it has lots of pets. Uh, as you can see the first pet is the crystal golem. Now this is what the crystal golem looks like. It actually is just a little rock version of the female ice form from ice. Uh, it follows you around, uh, attacks. Uh, the damage it does and its survivability is based on your combat rating. See, it's uh, it attacks very slowly, um, but it is three or four ticks. A um, couple different attacks there. Um, now the other pet is the brick golem, and this is what that looks like. Um, it also does attack, but this is also a very good tank pet um, because it has. Uh, much uh, higher health and defense so it can take more hits um, but of course it's always going to do less damage and attack less frequently uh, so it does a quarter of the damage of the other pet so this is uh, a pet I wouldn't really recommend using while you're leveling up at all um, on the tree you'll see in between there's a move called damage shift uh, this is basically uh, what it looks like it's not going to do anything if you don't have any pets out because basically what it does is it transfers damage that you take to a pet that you have summoned. So you have, if you have the, the pet out with uh, extended health and defense, it'll transfer it to a pet that basically will survive better. One extra perk is um, while you are in a tank roll, it also gives you an extra 10% control resistance. So if you're using uh, a melee weapon and you constantly have a 20% control resistance buff, it will stack. So it is actually uh, pretty nice there see now the right side of the tree starts with uh, striking stones uh, just DPS ability applies the crushed effect um, then there's totem which is um, a lot like soul well from sorcery uh, just without the um, crit chance buff it gives your weapons um, and then you have uh, reinforce uh, start with striking stones so this is striking stones it is uh, AOE, you know, like a little circle around the target, so if there's four or five guys or however many grouped up, it will kind of hit them all. Uh, it just does a little damage tick. It's based on might. This is the totem. I mentioned it uh, being like so well um, from sorcery. It does less damage. Um, it ticks of six. It's pretty, pretty ridiculously low. Um, and again, this is tank form. Uh, the reason um, this is also good is because if you have a pet out and you're in tank form, it will heal it nearby. Kind of like so well has a little heal tick near it um, in sorcery if you're in healer role. Um, it is actually pretty good for tanking even if you don't use pets because um, might attacks are what get you aggro. So if you kind of just drop this near a huge group of adds, it will help you um, maintain your aggro. Um, on a large group without having to use a ton of power because um, as you can see my power it, it, well it doesn't use much power whatsoever and uh, it's gonna do mic ticks to everything nearby so just that simple fact uh, makes it pretty efficient and useful actually and then you have reinforce which is basically your um, your weapon boost uh, if you hit it you see uh, it gives you 115 precision I believe yes 115 precision and then uh, your crit chance for your abilities is boosted by 7% and by your weapon attacks is boosted by 7% um, all three of which are for 12 seconds um, which is actually really nice it's like a slightly better version of carnage um, from nature except it doesn't hit a group so while it is better for you um, it's not I wouldn't say better overall since it doesn't uh, boost an entire group's uh, stats. Uh, it is 
though great. I mean, you're just you're gonna notice more crits. I mean, I don't have any really skill points spent on this character right now, so my crit chance is very low just in general. But um, an extra seven percent is outstanding. That is basically seven skill points worth of uh, crit chance boost. And if you have, you know, 75, 85 skill points, and you actually have all the DPS things. You can't even buy that extra 7% anyplace else. So being able to use ability and boost an already high crit chance by an extra 7% is very nice. And also ability crit chance by 7%. Very, very few things in this game actually boost ability crit chance. So boosting it by 7% is outstanding. Uh, the left side of the tree begins with shards. Uh, then it goes to debris field and uh, rubble crush. Now shards is a um, really good move. It's a knockback, it's a knock up, it does three or four uh, damaged ticks, it doesn't split, and it is conal AoE. So um, the entire cone of the ability you see, and it kind of just on the outside skirts of it. So if you don't actually see the ef rock effects hitting somebody, if they're kind of standing right next to it, they could still get hit by and get knocked up and get CC'd. Um, in tank roll, it's pretty good against you know a whole group of adds. It's kind of like a AOE stun knockup. Um, I guess a little bit like a resonating gale if you use that while tanking. Um, you know, heck, it's great against the healer drones, uh, the little gold hand adds in um, in Sunstone Matrix. Uh, it's just pretty decent all around. Um, it's really fun while leveling up too because everything is immune uh, is vulnerable to CCs as you level up. So yeah, I, I just it's thoroughly a fun ability. Um, it does kind of use a lot of power, so it might not be the most power efficient of abilities, but uh, sometimes you know if you just want to have fun, try it out. You know. Uh, so this is the debris field. It's like wintery tempest, circle of protection, inferno, those types of um, abilities. It's AOE damage field, basically. Um, really nice effect on it. I think they did a good job with the look of it. Um, it's pretty useful. Um, it takes half my power bar, so it's up there with Wintery Tempest. Um, I don't think any move in the game is worth half your power bar. So 525 power costs. As you can see, that's the power that was just restored to me. Um, that is a ton of power. Um, yeah, in tanking, AoE damage will get you aggro, but the difference between this and the totem is you know the totem will get you the same aggro that this thing will and it costs a quarter of the power so um, while this is good it, it does more damage I wouldn't go out of my way to say it's more efficient simply because it's gonna put more of a burden on the group um, in general because that's more power that the controllers have to give you instead of healers and things like that um, and in DPS um, rotation I might find some use for it but I wouldn't rely on it um, because of how much power it costs. Um, yeah, if you're dotting up a boss, start with it. Um, aside from that, uh, it is extremely costly. Uh, that just leaves two superchargers in the tree. Uh, one is a 50% supercharge, it's called uh, Meteor Shower, and the other is a 35% um, supercharge, it's called Envelop. It's actually a lot like the um, Ice Block supercharge in Ice. Um, this is Envelop just kind of puts you in a little rock shield you're basically uh, immune from damage it heals you a little bit and then you just burst out um, basically uh, you can clip out of anything in the world with it you can use it well controlled so the idea is basically if um, you know you're, you're standing in some boss's red circle attack and you're in an animation and you know you're gonna die you hit it um, probably not very useful um, some people might find uses for it go for it um, I probably wouldn't use it this is Meteor Shower. So you can see, um, it does an initial AoE damage, uh, burst damage on who you've targeted with some AoE spillover damage on other targets. Uh, when you form the Meteor, then you kind of lift it up in the ground and smash it back down, and there's uh, AoE damage. Uh, it's pretty useful. I mean, 50% supercharge. If you have an uh, absolute huge amount of might, um, it will be extremely useful uh, but you know I again as flight I would always prefer vacuum bubble that brings us to the seismic tree which starts with the ability called stone which is basically uh, just a knockback um, the right side of the tree we have localized tremor followed with unstoppable and sandblast uh, now localized tremor is just a little tiny um, 
might attack. It is very localized. Uh, the AOE range of it is very, very, very tiny. So there'd have to be basically two guys standing on top of each other um, to get the attack. Um, Unstoppable is your group breakout for tank roll. It's kind of like your win award, your shatter restraints, that kind of thing. Uh, it gives group immunity. Um, it's your cleanse in PvP. So I'd recommend recommend buying it if you ever plan on PvPing. Um, it's just a nice little breakout ability. Um, there is a little um, might tick from it as well when you're standing next to a group of people. So uh, in tank roll again, you know might ticks help you build your aggro, maintain it. So if you're you know kind of standing in a group of five or six guys, not only are you giving um, the group immunity, you're kind of gaining a little bit more aggro from them. And finally, there's sandblast, which looks like this. Um, different weapons that you have, well, your character will do a little bit different animations. Like, you know, in Sorcery, this uh, animation that I'm doing for it is the same thing that you do for, like, Final Fury when you shoot out the end of your staff. Um, if you have a rifle, it'll come out of your rifle, um, that kind of thing. Um, it is AoE, but it's conal. Um, so, you know, anything standing in front of you, uh, when the person you've targeted, the other guys, like, you know, here, 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 will take the ticks as well. Now, the left side of the tree uh, begins with Pebble Blast, then there is Epicenter and Tectonic Break. Uh, this is Pebble Blast, it's just a little, um, might take, they do take more damage if they are dazed. Uh, Tectonic Break dazes, so first I'll daze them and then I'll do it, so you see there's an extra little uh, damage tick there because they're dazed. So essentially doubles its damage to daze enemies. Daze is this little effect that you see on him. Uh, the new mental update um, actually comes with a ton of dazing abilities. So if you're playing with a mental controller, um, you will be able to do more damage with uh, your dazing uh, moves. And that leaves us with um, one of my favorite moves for tanking with Earth, which is uh, this. It's called Epicenter. Um, it's a pull and an AoE tick. It does not use much power. You could almost spam it. Um, it uses, you know third of the power that uh, Debris Field uses. Uh, yanks everything to you. It's, it's very useful. The problem is its range. I mean, as you can see this, this circle, um, you know, so if something's like way over here, um, you'd have to use a different pull. But, you know, keeping a group of ads on you, making sure they're on you, is pretty useful and uh, priceless, essentially, when you're tanking. That brings me to the middle of the tree, um, which also contains my favorite things about Earth. Um, it's this ability called Aftershock. Um, as you, you see in the overall seismic description, um, it's basically tapping the melee button directly after using an ability, which then continues the use of the ability. It's almost a little bit like light, how you can kind of chain between different attacks, but the numbers switch from yellow to white. Um, the big difference, though, with Earth is that it continues to drain power, even though the numbers switch to precision. So it is a power drain. But the reason it drains power is to limit it somewhat because some like this move jackhammer here is unlimited see it says aftershock unlimited so if you have somebody feeding you a ton of power you could actually just never stop using this ability um, whereas the other two abilities are limited to three aftershocks um, the reason you want to do this um, I mean, yes, it does do a little bit more damage, uh, like, you know, for upheaval, it'll do more damage, but the real reason is it changes um, the amount of damage that you absorb, um, which is incredibly important, because I would, if you noticed before when I was looking at abilities, I'll just use this ability one time, uh, if you go and you look at it, because I'm in tank roll, upheaval gave me a 25% damage absorption, um, which means I take, you know, a quarter less damage, which is nice. But if I use the aftershock before it, so you see there's a couple aftershocks there. There's two upheavals. One of them is the normal 25%, and the other one is an additional 50%. So um, right off the bat, you automatically have 75% damage um, reduction. It doesn't matter what your defense is. It doesn't matter, you know, what if you just do that in, you know, the minute you turn level 30 and you do an alert, you automatically can get, you know, uh, three quarters damage reduction when you do your first alert. It doesn't matter what gear you're wearing. So you see that there. Now you saw upheaval. Um, this is the gemstone shield. Uh, just tapping it and quickly getting out of it gives you uh, one little crystal shield. 
uh, it gives you basically 25% uh, uh, damage absorption. Now the gemstone shield has aftershocks. Um, if you do one aftershock, it gives you one more crystal to shield you. Uh, if you do two aftershocks, it gives you two more crystals. And then the third aftershock um, actually does damage, so it'll help you, you know, um, do damage. I guess it's just, they just can't keep giving you crystals. Um, if you do the full aftershocks, this is what it looks like, and you saw there was 125 tick. Um, the difference is the shield um, see absorbs 25% damage base, but then an extra 100 damage. So you have 125% damage absorption uh, with all the shields. Um, the final move was Jackhammer, which was the one that I mentioned as being unlimited. Um, it is going to get it. Li it stops at 75% damage absorption. Uh, this is what it looks like. See, so it basically went through my full power bar there. Um, it's AOE. It's actually um, pretty decent damage. Can you imagine with a ton of precision and all the crit chances? Uh, it'd be really nice. Um, see, there it goes, hitting everything. Uh, the controller feeding you back power, too. The, the problem is the precision ticks don't give you aggro. Might ticks do. So that's not going to be any type of magic aggro builder. Um, if you're tanking and you have it on your loadout, I would just limit it to three. Once you get the 75% uh, um, absorption. Just because, you know, you, you, you're going to need, you know, less than that or whatever. Uh, you, you don't need more than that. It won't keep going up. Now, the uh, last thing I feel I need to say is um, defense is still extremely useful. Um, basically, um, if you were going to be taking 100 damage and you have the 75% um, absorb, you basically only take 25 damage. But the more defense you have, the less that base damage is. So with more defense, that 100 damage will then you know become 80 damage. And then you only absorb a quarter of that and it, it's only 20 damage. Uh, that basically in that tree just leaves the two supercharges that I haven't talked about yet. Um, Earthquake, which is 25% supercharge, and you can aftershock it, which ends up using more supercharge. So if you spam it, as you saw, um, it just keeps going, which is pretty cool. Now the um, Earthquake is actually kind of cool because it's a 25% supercharge, or 50, or 75, or 100. So say you know you're in a circumstance where you want to use the hundred and you start hitting the aftershocks and then the boss resets or deagros or you know whatever maybe somebody else supercharged killed all the ads, you could just stop hitting it and save the rest of your supercharge for the next time you want to do it. It's the only supercharge in the entire game that's like that, and that thing is, I think, very useful for that reason. The other supercharge is uh, Entomb, which is a hardcore CC. Um, anybody you throw it on is just basically stuck in there. Uh, the key is, you know, stick this on the ad in the middle of all the ads. Because when it breaks, it's going to do uh, AoE damage. Or, you know, stick it on the ad that stuns everybody. Stick it on the ad that heals other things. Uh, it's it's kind of a useful um, supercharge for absolutely just getting somebody out of the fight temporarily. Um, but, um, you know, you have to play a careful game when picking a supercharge. Uh, it's an ability that you need to be able to hit when you don't want to use power. So if you find the most efficient thing is being able to take various um, ads out of a fight in order to you know help the group out the most, then go for it. But for me, um, you know, is tank supercharge is a delicate rope to walk, um, whether to use one or not. Um, as a DPS, you want to seriously just be able to put out as much damage as possible without using any power um, you know which which some have and some don't uh, not all superchargers are winners but the problem is they're too easy to make overpowered especially considering they don't cost any power that brings me to loadouts um, for tank I do something like this um, I flow pressure system for my pull instead of the uh, hand simply because it's uh, more AOE more spread out you pull more people to you um, I also still have uh, Epicenter in here, so it's kind of two poles. Um, I have the shield, um, and then Upheaval to build up the 75% uh, percent absorption. I do not have Jackhammer, again, just because it wastes a, uh, a lot of power. Um, I don't have Debris Field either. I do have this thing, the Shard, um, again, just to maintain aggro. Um, it's really a, a cheap, simple way to, to keep them on you. And then uh, a knock up 
Um, because you need it, you know, to be able to CC and stuff as well. I mean, this is just my tank loadout. Um, this is what I play in my Earth character on the main server. I think it's a fun loadout. Um, it's useful. Uh, you know, it's efficient as far as power goes. So you're not going to be much of a burden to the group. Now, as far as um, DPS goes, um, this is, I guess, would be you know my loadout. I haven't really DPS much in my main, but this was my gut to go with. So um, it, it's not finally tested or anything. You know, pick stuff you like. Find the best way to make it work is kind of the beauty of the game because it takes a very hard fail of a player to not be able to clear stuff. Um, I have to be filled on here um, just for maintaining dots. Um, one word of advice with uh, your weapon proc is it lasts 12 seconds. Do not uh, stop attacking until it wears off. Let the 12 seconds go. Um, if you just look under your life bar, you see you have the little explosion and the little um, uh, crosshairs. When that crosshairs goes away, feel free to cast your uh, your dots again. Um, I have sandblast here um, because it's also a finisher. So if the target is under 35% health, they are going to take more damage, which is very useful. I have shards uh, again because it's good AOE damage, especially in uh, parts of the raids where there's lots of ads. Uh, it's very, very good AOE damage. Uh, jackhammer, again, for when you feel confident in the controller supplying you with power, because it just doesn't stop and it hits everything and it doesn't mitigate, so it's nice. Um, and then my final supercharge, I went with Vacuum of Blight. Yes, I do like Earthquake more, um, but uh, again, one of the interesting things about um, Earth is that you could actually have a very efficient dual spec, which I'm always a fan of. Uh, the way I look at it is if you are Earth, it doesn't mean you're a DPS, it doesn't mean you're a tank. Um, if, if your power set allows you the luxury of being able to be both, simply all you need is the gear, go for it. Because otherwise you're only playing half of your power set. Um, so for the dual spec, um, in the geokinesis tree I basically have down to the weapon proc, um, which you could also use for tanking because it, see, it says protects the group member with the lowest health by transferring power to you, uh, damage to you. So um, that is also very good for tanking. Um, you know, some you might want it on your uh, bar instead of the uh, little AOE thing, but I'd rather maintain my aggro and hope the healers can keep people up. Uh, keep as much stuff on me as possible is the way I look at it. Um, so this is what I have for that, and then for seismic, this is what I have. Basically, almost everything in the seismic tree. Um, the dual spec doesn't afford you the luxury of anything in iconics, but again, that's. I swear to you, all that they are is luxuries. Um, nothing in here is particularly great. Like I said, the 50 defense doesn't even give you 1% damage reduction. You need 71 defense for that. Um, 100 health is always good, but it should never be necessary. Um, 100 power is always good, but you can mod power now, so um, it's not as much of a you know a hurt on the group. Um, and then again for DPS, um, these are good, but you don't need them. If you need them, you're not a very good player. It just comes down to that. 3% critical attack chance is not going to make a fail group succeed. Um, bottom line, no iconic power um, is going to make a fail group succeed, except for honestly maybe word of power, which is a controller supercharge. Like that could turn what is almost a wipe into a success in some raids. Um, again, you're not a controller. You don't need it. Don't look at it. Uh, that's, you know, play Earth. Um, you, you don't have to use this spec, obviously. Play it the way you like it. Um, just remember the big thing is after you hit your weapon proc, do not stop attacking until that little crosshairs goes away, because otherwise it's going to go to waste. While you have the, the bonus, go for it. Um, again, I'm wearing tank gear and I don't have really any skill points spent, so um, expect to see bigger numbers than this if you're a DPS. Uh, that's pretty much it for Earth. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I always try to answer every question. Um, send me a message uh, if you have requests for videos. I also have a mental video that's half finished. I'm not going to bother posting it until I get opinions from a couple mental players to actually throw into the video. Earth is one of those things where not very many people play. So um, I felt the guide was actually more of a necessity for the community because there's some people who have been playing the game since launch, play the Earth DLC pack for the raids don't even know the fundamental basics of earth because maybe they never played it to 30 or maybe they're not interested that's fine just knowing how a power set plays is always a little bit of a help 
So I felt I felt that this video was more a necessity. Yes, I'm on the test server and there are new mental powers and a lot of people haven't seen them and they look really cool and there's some new moves and all that kind of stuff. But um, a month from now, that's going to be old news. So I figured the Earth video, a month from now, there's still going to be people who want to know how to play Earth versus people who just want to see what a new mental move looks like. So I'm going to post that video when it's ready. Um, I want you guys to be able to get a full, um, you know, opposing opinions on a power set by you know players who are actually able to complete all the content just to drive home my point that no one way to play this game is the right way um, there's always another way um, it might be different it doesn't mean it's worse um, I, I am a firm believer of best in this game is extremely subjective um, there's a lot of people that kind of drag on with scorecards and they just aim to play the game to have the most healing or have the most damage Whereas they think it's efficient, but it's a group game, not a solo game. So if you're kind of hurting the group just to boost a number, like if you're constantly hitting heals, even when people barely need health, just to make sure you're the top healer, you're hurting the group because that's power that other people could need for other things. So um, play it with a group in mind. You know, if, if you're in a raid and everything is dying fast and you guys are succeeding everything, it doesn't matter really the damage it, or the healing or the power what matters is the group is working well so always try and aim towards that because there's lots of raids that I've been noticing and I'm doing I pug a lot of prime battlegrounds and I do a lot with my league and when I pug them it is eight individual players playing for themselves is what it seems like and when I do it with my league it is people playing with and for other people so if people try and you know focus on that more than themselves I think uh, if you're having trouble succeeding in the game, try and focus on the group mechanics more. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, have a great day, everybody.